She will take on Catherine Corrigness at PFL 10 Madison Square Garden. She is Dakota Ditchava. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you very much for having me. Now, it's probably not the first time my viewership has seen you. I know Fraser did an interview with you a few months ago before your last fight for PFL. Um, if they haven't seen you, uh, then this is me getting to know you because I don't necessarily know the entire backstory. I want to go from the ground up and get to know who Dakota is uh, before we got to the PFL. So growing up, obviously you're from the UK. Uh, you've made quite the name for yourself. I've noticed on social media and whatnot, you've yeah. obviously got to where you are today. But growing up, how did you get into combat sports? Were you always an athlete? Uh, talk about growing up overseas. Yeah, um, so obviously I'm from Manchester in the UK, but um, I originally got into fighting through my mum. So my mum, Lisa Howard, she used to fight when she was younger, obviously. Um, she was a really big name in women's martial arts. She did uh, full contact karate, Muay Thai and kickboxing. So um, yeah, I kind of picked up her name straight away. Um, well, I picked up like, this is Lisa Howard's daughter. Um, yeah. <laughs> So like from from like being four years old, I think I had like my first two little interclubs when I was four. Um, and then, yeah, I just didn't didn't do it at all after that. Uh, completely stopped, went into other sports. I did like gymnastics and my mum wanted me to be like a dancer and a singer, <laughs> the opposite to what I am. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I think like because she'd been through this whole journey herself, she knew how tough it was and like what kind of life I was going to have. So she did want to give me the option to like do something else and push me into like something a little bit more girly, I think. But, um, but yeah, I kind of came back to it when I was like 12, 13 myself and decided like, this is what I want to do and I want to start fighting now. So she kind of sat me down and said, if you're going to do this, like put everything into it, you know, like it's not one of them sports you can be half hearted with at all. Like you need to put everything into it. It's going to be tough. And that's kind of what's led me to being here now. Um, I had quite a long career in, uh, in well, long, I'd say it's probably quite short, to be honest, yeah. in high boxing before I transitioned to MMA. But um, yeah, I'm here now and this is kind of just, that's how it started through my mum. That's amazing. Now you said dancing and singing. Do, yeah. do you still dabble in dancing and singing? Was there any competition in that growing up? Like, did you, was it high level at the time? Yeah, I mean, like I, did I mean, gymnastics. as high level as it could be at like ten years old. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I did gymnastics, and like the first competition I did, I won gold in like the floor, the beam, and I think it was the bars that I did. So I kind of could have been good at something else. I feel like you know, I think sport is just my thing anyway. But um, I just always got drawn back to Thai boxing myself, and that's kind of just like or oh, mixed martial arts, and that's kind of just where I've, where I've ended up. But uh, I suppose I could have I could have gone into something else, but I don't have anything to like do with any kind of dance or gymnastics anymore. So are people surprised when like you bust out the karaoke or what? <laughs> I mean, my friends are always getting me to sing like that. And my mom, like she always wants me to sing. You know, I feel like she quite likes my voice. She says I can sing. So I'm going to say I'm all right at the karaoke. But <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not something that I'm very comfortable in doing. Like I would rather get up and fight in a cage full of like a full arena than I would to get up and sing in a bar on the karaoke. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, there's some of these fighters that in their post-fight speeches, they throw out a song or something. They They <laughs> sing into the crowd. Uh, Maybe that's your thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not too sure. Maybe out of like adrenaline and stuff, you might get that out of me once, but um, not out of choice, that's for sure. <laughs> so you said Thai boxing brought you back. Uh, competing as a youngster, what what was that like? Um, Yeah, I mean, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think um, the adrenaline and stuff like that is something I've always like um, needed in my life. I think it's like... I definitely get that from my mom. She's always been one to like do bungee jumps and skydives and, you know, I'm like similar. I get a kick out of doing like scary things and stuff that puts me like on edge. So I feel like fighting is always something that, that I was going to get that feeling from and something that I can't really live without. So yeah. For sure. Uh, is she still like a big part of your journey today? Yeah, so my mum and my older brother as well are still my stand-up coaches when I'm back home. Um, my mum has a part-time gym that I've kind of, that I fought under under her for my whole uh, Thai boxing career. And then 
Um, she still coached me when I moved and transitioned to MMA, but I just didn't fight under her gym. But um, she's really heavily involved in my training still. So, um, yeah, my fight next week, my brother will, will be flying over to corner me and she'll come to watch, but she doesn't corner me anymore. She just uh, coaches. It's always more nerve wracking when they're in your corner. Yeah, definitely. And when it's your mum as well. <laughs> exactly. Like that's another whole different relationship too. <laughs> I mean, Sam Alvey has his wife in his corner, so that's that's even more different, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like that would be completely different too. <laughs> of course. So you talked about, you know, you're growing up, Thai boxing, that, that led to the transition to MMA. Um, talk about your first time stepping into the MMA uh, gym, like obviously uh, learning wrestling, learning jujitsu, learning regular you know, stand-up boxing, not just the, the Muay Thai or the Thai boxing. Uh, what did you fall in love with on that side of the game in comparison to the stand-up, the wrestling, the jiu-jitsu? How does that sort of emulate into your game now? Yeah, so um, I actually just, I didn't put any pressure on myself. I kind of just said, like, I want to try the groundwork. Um, one of my, someone that I'd known a long time through the Thai boxing career, um, coached at an MMA gym, um, and they said to me, like, come and do some one-to-ones and some sessions at the MMA gym with one of the coaches that I know and, like, you know, just, just see if you enjoy it. And it was always something I wanted to try. So I actually went and did um, some MMA jiu-jitsu, well, some jiu-jitsu sessions. And I really, really enjoyed it. And then straight away I was just like, that's what I want to do. Like, I want to go into MMA. I feel like I'm ready to do it now. <laughs> so um, I kind of just started training that. And then it just kind of took off from there, like, I did feel a little bit like starting in MMA, I was going to have a little bit of a fresh start. So like no one would know my name. I feel like growing up in Thai boxing, everyone knew who I was. Every show I went to, they'd be like, Lisa Howard's daughter is fighting today. Like you should watch her. So I felt like moving over to MMA, I might be able to start like fresh, but that wasn't, that wasn't the case. Everyone <laughs> kind of soon, soon found out who I was like after my second or first or second fight. So, um, but I did really enjoy just starting something from scratch and having no pressure on being good at it. So, Do you think that if you had not fought your amateur career, say, in, in the UK and maybe transitioned over into the States or Canada or somewhere else other than the UK that you would have been able to sort of get away, get away from the name? Um. No, I don't feel like I would have. <laughs> My mum was like very well, very well known. She, yeah. um, quite, she beat a few big Americans. I think, um, I don't know whether Kathy Long was American and another another female that went into acting and stuff like that, that she beat like twice. So I feel like everyone really knows her. She's, she's fought like in the States herself. So, you know, um, she's got quite a lot of contacts over here. So I feel like just anywhere I go, Everyone knows who we are. Like they still know my mom everywhere. <laughs> For sure. Now your amateur career, you went undefeated in that. What was the the decision to turn pro after four fights? Um, I mean, I was struggling for uh, opponents anyway. Of course. Um, struggling for opponents, and then also lockdown hit. So the whole COVID thing in the UK like really slowed everything down. Um, um, I was just, I just really struggled to find the girls to fight. And I feel like, um, you know, they were, they were handing me amateur opponents that were like pretty much, you know, um, like had a bit more experience than me anyway yes. because of my name. So I feel like the transition to, to pro from amateur to pro was kind of just something that I was, I was fine with. I feel like I got pushed up quite soon in Thai boxing too, because of my name. So, um, yeah, and also, like, I'd fought with elbows before in Thai of boxing, course. so it wasn't like I was moving up to pro and having to, like, worry about elbows and things like that. It was something I was already used to, so um, I feel like, you know, the transition for me was probably a little bit easier than for some people who haven't done that before. For sure, and as we said, you know, you're undefeated, you're going into this fight, uh, mm -hmm. PFL 10. You, they, you've fought for many different promotions. You fought for four different promotion five different promotions before you got to the pfl uh was that the plan all along to sort of play the field until you found this big promotion to to sign with yeah i think um i think what i've always wanted to do is just like keep my options open like i never really wanted to tie myself down too soon um until i felt it was right and i think that was a big part of me signing with pfl was that 
it really felt right and at the right time like I've fought on UAE Warriors before and you know other big shows and I've just never felt like I've wanted to to sign like a deal with them where I have to fight on their shows but when PFL approached me I felt like it was the right time it was the right contract for me and um so far so good because I've really enjoyed like the experience that I've had with these guys so far and I feel like it all come at the right time well I mean it wasn't too long that first experience (laughs) yeah I mean that was quite short but you know the whole thing just in general has been good for sure now uh, obviously the fight before the PFL one you went to a decision so you got to test yourself in there uh went every round uh, and went to the judges scorecards you're obviously in there looking for the finish. We haven't seen a submission out of you yet. You said you love in the jujitsu. Um, what can we expect to see out of you at the end of November here in comparison to your last fight? Obviously, we only saw uh, the first round. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping you get to see a little bit more. Um, of course, you know, I'd like to showcase a little bit more of my skill. But um, I feel like because I've come from a stand-up background, people think I haven't really got like a a jujitsu game or anything but I definitely do it's just that I, I haven't had the chance to show it yet so um I mean if it goes to the floor expect to see you know ex- expect to see me try and pull off a few submissions because yeah. I have got them in the back but um <laughs> if not then I'm sure you'll see like a, a a good striking game anyway that's for sure I should hope so <laughs> now this card's pretty stacked it's going to be on pay-per-view um it's at Madison Square Garden it uh yeah yeah it's how cool is it to be on this card? I, I mean, when they told people that it was going to be on pay-per-view, when they told people that it was going to be in New York City, it, it got a lot of sort of traction. Uh, what were your thoughts yeah. when you when you found out that you'd be fighting in New York City? Uh, it's got to be pretty cool, especially in that venue. Yeah, I mean, I haven't fought in the States at all yet. So yeah. that was just like, for me, massive to make my US debut. And then for it to be on a pay-per-view card is like, crazy you know like it's my second fight with pfl and already like i've, I've made the, the the undercard of a pay-per-view show which is just incredible for me it's just a really amazing way to to end the year this will be my fourth fight for this year as well so i feel like i've been quite active but um i'm so excited for it obviously my us debut like i said and um with the one in august being so short it's nice that i get to come back and try and showcase a little bit more for everyone for sure and and the main event and the co-main event you've trained with two of the fighters uh you've trained with kayla harrison you've trained with brendan Lochnane. uh talk about those fights tell me how you see them playing out because uh, obviously you said you're on the preliminary card of this pay-per-view you will have a chance to get out there you'll be able to watch these fights uh, how do you see these two fights playing out for these guys yeah i mean i'm hoping kayla comes back with the win and brendan as well i feel like they're honestly two of the most dedicated people on and fighters that I've, I've like been able to be around um obviously Kayla I don't know if this is is this her third or a fourth time in this, oh, in this I series? believe it's her you third know, yeah she yeah, I mean she's, she's racking up the million dollars that's for sure <laughs> she is you know and it's just incredible like obviously they fight quite often so it's, yeah it's incredible to see that she's done it you know a few years in a row like that um and like her focus and dedication like i see her in the gym all the time and like you know like her attitude around the gym and i fought on the same card as the last time so to see like um her focus before the fight and stuff um in in london was just uh, nice to witness um and i definitely feel like she's gonna she's gonna come back with another win and brendan is like he's just been around for so long fighting i feel like he's just he's just a big ball of energy i feel like he's like he's really hit his prime now like this is definitely his time so i have all faith in him like pulling it off this time i feel like last year was like a warm-up for him he just like you know got used to everything when he first signed with pfl so like this year he's just like gonna gonna smash it i'm, I'm behind both of them for sure now i know you're you've been in florida training uh which is nice because then you get to make the trek to new york are you there yet no, I leave on Monday. Okay, yeah. so but at least there's no time zone change. So like you you've been able to adjust accordingly. What was the trip to Florida and sort of the acclimatization like? Yeah, I mean, um it was obviously my second time coming here, so it was a little bit like I knew what to expect this time, but um I much prefer being in the sun as well. So, of course. <laughs> you know, when I got here it was like absolutely fine for me. I feel like I got plenty of sleep being on my own and um 
yeah the, the warm weather settled me in straight away <laughs> so is that like you know lounging at the beach or are you able to do outdoor workouts yeah i mean no all of our workouts are more or less indoors unless i go running which it's nice to go running in the sun instead of the rain like it is in manchester of course <laughs> but um but yeah like i'm i'm only staying like not far from the gym in a hotel like a little mini apartment thing so um i actually have a pool outside so between training if i'm like just resting i'm like trying to top up my tan before i head to new york and uh, get under the big lights make sure i'm brown <laughs> <laughs> i saw your interview with james lynch and you said that you want to make this more of a regular thing uh how how often would you like to be training? Will it just be during training camps or would you like to spend more of your time in Florida? Yeah, no, the plan next year is to come out of camp. I feel like um, I just kind of come, like last time I was here from a full camp, this time I only managed to get four weeks, but I want to kind of start of, start building more of a, a home here and actually basing myself here a lot more so that I can um, progress outside of camp rather than just inside. I feel like, you know, I want to be able to train without any pressures of a fight coming up. I want to be able to like progress a lot. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to definitely start like coming here a lot earlier and spending a lot more time here. You say you want to, you know, progressively stay there a lot more, but we've got, you know, PFL Europe going on next year. Uh, tell me about your thoughts on that and, and how cool is it that they're going to be transitioning to, you know, doing all the overseas stuff? Yeah, I feel like this is really massive, like not just for me, but like for a lot of fighters that will, I feel like we're missing a lot of talent. Um, I think people don't get like as, as, you know, they don't get promoted as much on these like smaller shows, like the big talent, unless they finally hit like the main PFL season or like, um, you know, the, the top of USC or Bellator. Like I feel like PFL Europe is going to open like a whole new, um, just a whole new way for everyone and, you know, bring out a lot of talent that we, we could possibly be missing out on. For sure. You know, we didn't even really talk about your fight. So obviously Friday, November 25th, you will be fighting. You said the preliminary card, but fans should tune in. Uh, just let people know what they can expect out of you inside that cage on November 25th. Yeah, I'm hoping you guys get to see a little bit more. It's obviously my first U.S debut so um i'm super excited to to showcase on espn plus but um yeah expect i don't know yeah expect a real <laughs> tough fight from expect me expect the like, unexpected <laughs> yeah expect the unexpected like um people a lot of people underestimate me because i'm like you know just a, a a tall blonde but um yeah i'm definitely a different person when i get in the cage so keep your eyes out for me for sure one last thing is the plan for 2023 yeah. then the million dollars um, no, so I'm actually going to be in the um, PFL Europe season, which isn't the um, th the main PFL okay. like, uh, league for the million dollars. But um, yeah, maybe in the future I'll be uh, I'll definitely be hitting the million. But for now, I'm going to be heavily involved in the um, PFL Europe stages. Perfect. She is Dakota Decheva. She fights on. November 25th, Madison Square Gardens, live on pay-per-view, and she fights on ESPN+. Plus. Just let people know where they can find you on social media and uh, any sponsors, any thank yous. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Dakota D or uh, Facebook, Dakota Dichaba. And I just want to say thank you to Ideal Nutrition, Block Asset, Kettle Kings. You guys are the ones that keep us fighters going um, all year round. We couldn't do it without your support, so thank you.